In the last month, I've talked to multiple people who have mentioned that they use Image as their photo management solution. And as someone who really doesn't have a proper setup for photo management, I figured I'd give it a try. And boy, I'm glad that I did. I think I've finally found my long-term solution to ensure that all of my photos from my fancy mirrorless camera to my iPhone are properly stored in my home lab and accessible from anywhere in the world. So how about we talk about it? I'm looking for something that can automatically back up my photos from my iPhone, monitor my local storage for my photography pictures, and allow me to share albums with my family and friends. And I know there are plenty of apps out there that can do this, including PhotoPrism, Nextcloud, your off-the-shelf NAS solution like Synology Photos, and even just plain old iCloud. But while all these solutions are okay, they never really checked off all the boxes for me. Image seems to do that though. It's a completely free open source photo management app that you can self host and access over the internet using your own domain and port forwarding or tunnels or a VPN, however you want to do it. The first person that really drew me into this was when I was visiting the Santa Clara Micro Center and talked with Ava there about home labbing. Then a week later, I see my boy Techno Tim put out a guide on how to get image set up and running. It's basically like it was meant to be. For me, I just went with the super vanilla install for now, and Image has some really great docs on how to get things up and running, and they even have a section for using Portainer specifically, which is what I used. The only thing I had to do beforehand was specify a location where I want my photos to be stored, which you'll want to be some kind of mass storage device. Other than that, I just left it as is for the most part. And this really isn't a tutorial video, more of me just being excited about a piece of software I discovered. Anyway, how about we just take a look at my setup and I'll show you how I actually use it. All right, so here we are in my actual deployment of image and yeah, you can see it's mostly pictures of my kids. I know, adorable. But anyway, this is the main overview page. Obviously you can see your photos here and it even works with uh, Apple's live photos, which is really cool. You can just hover over it and it just works. It's really nice. Then over here, you can filter by date. So if you want to look at 2024 or whatever, go down and uh, there you go. You can start scrolling through all of your photos all in one spot, pretty nifty. The only issue I have with the default kind of view is that there's no like tree view or no real list view. All you can do is see them in this grid style, which for most people is probably fine, but I would have liked to see some different types of views um, implemented here, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit nitpicky here. They also have this really cool filter option up here. So you click that and you can filter down into like context. You can actually search for things. You can pick a specific place. So it will pick based on, you know, what you have already in your photos and pull the metadata out. You can even go in here and filter by camera. So if I just want to see all the photos I took with my uh, Sony A7R4, I can search that and boom, all of the photos I took with that camera will be listed here. And that's pretty sweet. So really good stuff, really good basic stuff for, for just viewing um, and managing your photos right here uh, from the homepage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and I'll kind of give you a, a tour of my setup and how I actually use it. So in Explore, uh, this one's kind of just gives you a list of people and places. Uh, it'll list all the people you can go in and give them names. So obviously this is me. I've already done that. I've said this is me. It'll show you all the photos with me in it and it'll do that for whatever people it finds in there. If you want to use this, go ahead. If you don't want to use it, cool. Um, same thing with places. Based on metadata, it'll pull out where your photos will, were taken. So if I want to see all the photos I took from Berlin, I can just click that and boom, there's all my photos from Berlin. Uh, map, obviously, it shows you pretty much the same thing of the places, but in a map view. So, oh, look, here we go. All the Berlin pictures from here. Oh, I want to see all the photos I took in uh, New York. Let's go up here. Oh, okay. Click it. Boom. Look at that. Photos we took from New York a couple weeks ago. Very nice. Uh, sharing, we'll get into that in a second. Um, let's get into albums and favorites because this is my first kind of real gripe and I'll uh, you'll see. So favorites is a way, obviously, if you favorite an image, it goes directly into this default favorites. Essentially, it's an album. 
And yeah, you can see all my favorites here. But the issue is that if you go into albums where you can create your own albums, you know, obviously custom albums, do whatever you want with it. But you'll see in here, I also have a favorites album. So it's very confusing. And I'll explain why when we get to how I have it working with my, uh, my phone. And you'll see why it's kind of annoying to me. But we'll come back to that in a second. So folders, I like this feature. So folders, all that does is let you browse a local directory that you can specify when you set up image, image, image. Um, so for example, all of my photos from my camera, I store on my main NAS. And that has a shared directory that I pass through to Docker when I set it up. So image says, oh, okay, I'll look at this local storage that you already have set up on your NAS and you can monitor that. Going through here, photos, boom, here's all of my photos from my main camera that I offload to my NAS. So here I'll actually show you in Docker how I have it set up. So here's my image stack, which contains the image server, uh, the machine learning, the Redis service, and the Postgres database. And you'll see in here that I've just passed through a volume to image. It's on the mount photos, my library on my host, which is where my photos are stored. And I've just passed that through to mount photos on image. And then just like that, you'll be able to, to see it in image. As you can see, base directory, mount photos, mount photos, just like that. Okay, back into it. Okay, utilities. So in here, a couple of useful things if you want to use these. So review duplicates. If you click on that, it'll show you any duplicates that exist that it thinks are duplicates. Um, I think it's kind of weird with um, with the folders because I think it's just flagging everything. So I don't know how useful that is because these are the same photo. I get that. But you can see the original path is Mount Photos 2025. And this one is upload. It shouldn't be uploaded. Um, so I don't know why it's doing that. So you also have review large files. So if you go in here, it'll show you files that it deems are large and you can do something with them. I don't, I don't know. I guess it's just there for review, like it says. But yeah, I think there are more utilities depending on how you do the install of image, but I, I don't use them to be honest. But I mean, those are the main things I wanted to cover. Uh, if you delete something, you can still view it in the trash for 30 days. Uh, there's an archive and there's locked folders if you wanna have specific folders that are locked down. But the big thing about this was how it works on my iPhone because that was the big thing. I wanted something that could just automatically take the photos from my phone and push them to a self-hosted solution. And Image does that through their app. So let's take a look at the app. All right, so here's that similar theme as the web version of it. Um, you can see all of your stuff. Uh, you can search. So similar on uh, the web app, you can search for things and based on machine learning, it should find things. So if I just search uh, sunset, look at that. And it does a pretty good job. I mean, those are sunsets. And then you can filter out based on different metadata and stuff like that. But that wasn't the big thing. I, I just got distracted. The big thing was syncing. And this brings me back to what I talked about before with the albums and the favorites. So here's how I use it. <clears throat> when I take a photo with my iPhone, I don't want it to sync everything. I favorite the ones that I want, and then I want those to be saved um, to image because otherwise I would have way too many photos because um, I take a zillion photos and I pick my favorites. So the way image works is I go in here up at the top and you can select backup albums. So you can see here, I've selected my favorites album, which by default is called favorites, which conveniently matches the favorites in here. And you can't change that. That's one feature I am pleading for. Let me change the name from what it is on my phone to what it is an image, because I was hoping that I could change it because it creates it by default. So since I'm syncing favorites on my iPhone, it creates a favorites under albums here. And if I change this name, if I go in here and I try to 
edit and I change this, it's just going to recreate it next time it syncs. So please let me do some type of mapping where I say favorites on my iPhone maps to an album called like Brett's iPhone on image. Please let me do that. That would be great. But that is my one major gripe I have with image. Everything else has been great. But you can see, you can select the album, click enable backup, and it'll start backing up to image. Then you can go in here and it's kind of confusing because you have backup options and there's sync albums. So they have something called sync and backup and they seem to use those words interchangeably, but just make sure that's turned on. And the other thing is how you connect to your server. So that's the big piece too, is that if you're all on the same network, it's easy. But the thing about using your phone is you're not always at home. Uh, you may want to sync photos that you've taken on the other side of the world. So your image server will have to be accessible to the outside world. Now I have multiple videos on how to do this. I'm not going to cover it in detail on this one. Go watch another one where I talk about self-hosting your own services. Uh, but essentially I just have a domain in Cloudflare. Uh, I pass that through to my um, public IP that gets routed to Nginx proxy manager and then sent to image. So when you first log into image, it'll ask you for that URL, but a cool feature that also exists is if we go into settings and we go into networking, you'll see the current address up here. Now this is my local address. Since I'm at home right now, that's what it's using. And there's something called automatic URL switching where you can tell it if I'm on this particular Wi-Fi, use a local server endpoint. My external, if I'm away from that, use my external one. That way, if I'm at home taking pictures, everything syncs way faster. It doesn't go out to the internet and come back in. It just does it locally. And that's a pretty cool feature. So when I'm home, it uses that local one. When I'm away, it uses my main one. I really like that feature. Another big thing that I wanted was the ability to share. So let's go back into there and I'll show you specifically for my favorites album. I wanted to be able to share that with my wife. So she has an account, she signed up and you can go into there. Then over here, it'll tell you who has access to it. So if you view all users, you can see I'm the owner and my wife is a viewer that has access to this album which again is called favorites. So on her side, it's probably super confusion. She probably has three favorites on there, which would be nice if she just saw an album that said Brett's iPhone, image please. But you can click the plus to add more users. Um, it's only me and my wife right now. So that's why it's saying I've shared it with everybody. But if you have more users signed up through your um, server, they'll be listed here. But if you want to share just a, a single photo, so what you can do is you can go to any photo. Let's take this one. Sure. Adorable. And you can go to share. You can give it a custom URL or it'll create one for you if you want. So this one's cute pic. Sure. You can give it a password, uh, description if you want, uh, expiration. So you only have one hour to use this. Uh, and some other information here, allow public user to download. And when you click create link, just like that, it gives you a link using the domain, your public domain, which is cool. And you can just copy that and send it to anybody and they will be able to download that photo, which is nice. And you can do the same thing with albums. So now if we go back into sharing and then we go to our shared links, you'll just see that one that we created. Um, that'll show all of them there. You can manage it. You say, oh, I don't want to be able to share this one anymore. Let's delete that. And now that link doesn't exist anymore. And yeah, I mean, Overall, that's how I use image. It works fantastic. Um, it, it does everything I need to and essentially more. That one feature that I've been asking for, please just let me uh, rename the synced album from my phone to something different on image. Please, uh, if you implement that image devs, uh, it'll be a 10 out of 10. Right now it's a 9.6, which is still fantastic. But that's Image, more specifically how I use Image. I know it wasn't a deep dive or anything because there's a lot more features and other people will probably use it a bit more different than I do, but I liked it so much that I figured I would just share it with you. What do you think? Are you a fan of Image or maybe you've been moved by this video to try Image yourself? Let me know down in the comments, but 
That's all I have for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more fun software you can self-host. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my self-hosted photo management software that syncs for my phone and goes to an album specified on the other end. Yeah, that was oddly specific. Y'all are great. And if you're still watching, you're a Polaroid. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.